get your adrenaline pumping like a good, loud rock concert. And it's always exciting to see your favorite band perform live. But there's one thing I've always wondered about live concerts. One one thousand, two one thousand. That's the problem. You always see the lightning before you hear the thunder. The reason, of course, is that compared to the speed of light, the speed of sound is rather slow. And because sound travels slower, you can do this. Hello! produce an echo. Now, an echo occurs whenever our ears hear the same sound more than once. But for that to happen, the sound waves need some room to travel. For example, if I stand close to the wall and yell, hello, there's no echo. That's because the sound going from my mouth to my ears and the sound bouncing off the wall and coming back arrive at my ears at roughly the same time. But if I back away from the wall, hello. Hello. hello! Now it takes a little longer for the sound waves to bounce off the ceiling and return to my ears. This delay means I'll hear the sound twice, and the result is an echo. Echo, 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 echo. So what does this have to do with the sound quality in a rock concert? Well, the biggest problem in most concerts place to show you what happens is a recording studio. Oi! Where we can control the echo. You've heard of the term reverb? It's short for reverberation, which basically means repeated echoes. Now, here in the studio, we can add reverb to my voice to make it sound like I'm talking in a bigger room. A little reverb is fine, but if you add too much, the echoes start to overlap each other. Now let's play a little music and start adding some reverb. You can hear that with too much echo, the music quickly loses its clarity, and the same thing can happen at a rock concert. So what controls how much echo a room will produce? Well, basically, there's three things to consider. First, how far away are the walls? The greater the distance between you and the walls, the longer it'll take the sound waves to return to your ears, and the more echo you'll hear. Second, what are the walls made of? The harder the surface, the more the sound waves will bounce. On the other hand, a soft, porous surface will absorb sound waves. <laughs> and third, how much power is pushing the sound waves? Come on, Mike, you're served. Let's go. The greater the force pushing the sound waves, the longer they'll bounce around the room before they finally dissipate. Put all these variables together, and this is acoustical hell. It's a hockey arena. And unfortunately, it's also where most rock concerts are held. So what's wrong with this place? Well, just look around. You have hard brick walls, hard seats, a hard concrete floor, and a high steel roof. And if you're going to fill a big place like this with sound, you're going to need lots of power. Which, of course, makes the echo even worse. What you really need is a building designed with acoustics in mind. Do you hear music? Ah, the symphony. No echo problems here. But why not? 
The concert hall is big. It has walls. It has a high ceiling. Why does it sound so good? Unlike the hockey rink, the concert hall is designed for echo control. So what's different about this place? How about some nice soft carpet to absorb some of the sound? Soft padded seats to absorb even more sound. And hanging from the ceiling are baffles, which help to absorb the sound waves bouncing off the roof. And check out the walls. These are soft panels that slide up and down on these tracks. So by sliding the soft panels down over the walls, you can adjust how much sound you want the walls to absorb. Now, most rock concerts are not going to be played in a building with adjustable walls, soft seats, and carpet on the floor. So if sound absorption is out, then is there anything else left that we can do to reduce the amount of echo you hear at a rock concert? <laughs> recent trends at rock concerts is to move some of the speakers off the stage and suspend them above the band. It's known in the biz as flying the speakers. Now it helps to give the audience a better view of the stage, but it also serves another purpose. Raising the speakers and tilting them forward does two things. First, it helps keep the sound waves from bouncing off the ceiling. Secondly, it forces more of the sound to bounce off the floor. And since the floor is a lot closer to your ears than the ceiling, sound waves that bounce off the floor have less delay and therefore less echo. Another trick is to reduce the amount of power you need to use. So how do you do that? Well, instead of putting all your speakers up front, you put some further out in the audience. If all your speakers are up front, you'll need lots of power to push the sound waves all the way to the back of the building. But if you put some speakers out in the audience, the sound doesn't have to travel as far, so you can lower the amount of power required to fill the arena. And less power means less echo. Now there's one last thing you can do to improve the sound of a rock concert. Play it outside. Outside, there are no walls or ceilings for the sound to bounce off of. And if there's no bounce, there's no echo. So out here, your ears hear the sound the way it was meant to be heard. Just once. Way to go, Chris. Yeah. Nice beats. Can you see anything? I don't know. Can I roll those binoculars? Man, you need to have a telescope to see this concert. Stay tuned as The Limit takes a look at how engineers attempt to tunnel under London's famous landmarks to create a subway train route. <laughs>